those. Um, we will uh, we will certainly participate and support the Boosters Club as well as the Touchdown Club. We want to work very closely with them. We are going to raise some money, of course, to accomplish some of the things we want to do, like build those sleds, and we've got some projects planned down at the stadium as long as we get permission to do those. Again, the mission is really to support the program and do it whatever we can to help the guys and the coaches uh, achieve what they want to achieve. Um, if you're interested in participating, you can send an email to SD Saints Quarterback Club, or you can see me and I can write your email address down, okay? And we'll start, we'll, it's really easy to join, doesn't cost anything. It's open to dads and stepdads and grandfathers and uncles and aunts, okay, sorry, guys only. Um, <laughs> But, but let us know, and we'll start sending you out emails, and we'll get you on a distribution list, and we'd love to have you come out and participate, okay? And just so you know, he's talking about the program, that goes all the way down to junior football. I know they recently, and I went to uh, a fundraiser that they were doing for the purpose of raising money to help purchase um, new helmets for junior football. And that's why I say it's not a high school um, pro, uh, football pro, uh, organization, but rather for the entire program from young to not so young. All right, now I'd like to in, in a moment talk about our summer schedule and before we get too far ahead. Don't, don't stay right there. Um, it, as I said earlier, if you lose the calendar or you're unsure of something, this is the website that you can go to and there's a, a tab on there that says calendar and it has our entire summer schedule on there as well. And that's lockerroom1.com slash team slash go saints okay and all this information is on there so if you were somewhere that didn't have it also uh, if you were on the road or something you were curious you could just pull it up on there and you'll find all that information uh, before I start about with our calendar and that's the bulk of what I want to talk about tonight I just thought I'd tell you a little um, I guess a story and, and the adults in here will know what I'm talking about eventually but not initially but it kind of leads into our summer calendar motif and there was a this is a, a young boy years ago had anemia so 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 badly that his doctor had told him as a, as a child like eighth grader that he'd never be able to compete in competitive sports he would be much too weak so as his freshman year rolled along and some of the young kids some of the last year's varsity kids are familiar with this story because it's in our winner's manual if you haven't seen our winner's manual make sure you see one this year um, last year we gave it to just the varsity kids, and next year it'll be for all kids from 9 through 12, our winner's manual. Anyway, this story, uh, as a freshman, he was told he was too weak to play any sports ever. But he wanted to decide, well, I'm going to go out and, and get involved with football. So uh, he became a team manager. And after being around a little bit more, um, he decided as a, uh, during his freshman year, his goal for next year is he wanted to be able to uh, get in and just simply make the team. So he ran, he lifted on his own. And so in his sophomore year, he made the team. Okay, and then he got a little more excited. And so he's gonna run, run hard, harder, lift more, and his goal for the next year was to get on the, in the field for one play, just get on the field. Okay, and he was able to get in the game as a junior. So now, really at his first going, his goal for his senior year was to become a starter, play every game, and earn a college scholarship, which is quite a pipe dream for a kid that three years ago was told he could never play any type of competitive sports. Now, as I said a minute ago, I'm sure some of you dads, moms, when I say the name, will know what I'm talking about. But I think it's quite an incredible story. And the guy I'm talking about is Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary is a Hall of Fame linebacker with the Chicago Bears, and wanted to be the head coach of San Francisco 49ers. And he was able to make those dream, dreams come true, not because of what people said he couldn't do, but because of what he decided he wanted to do, and recognize that hard work, determination, will get him there. And that's what I want to walk, get, get into next, is what are we going to do in this, in this summertime. So if you would please grab the Bozeman, grab your calendars, hopefully you have one or at least one near you. I want to just highlight a few dates, again, so there's hopefully so less confusion because obviously when I write it, it makes sense to me, but I'm not seeing light through your eyes, I'm only seeing light through my eyes, so I wanted to go through a few of those things with us. Okay, first of all, I need to understand, 
that when we come in, in, the, in the summertime for our, for our summer weights, conditioning, and any type of uh, skill development that we do, there's a difference between requirements and expectations. This is not a requirement. Summertime would make a requirement it's against rules to do it anyway. But rather an ex ex expectation, which I think is a little bit more important anyway. Okay, because it's an expectation for success. If you want to have success, we all know we got to put the time in and work hard. It's also an opportunity for development, both individually and collectively as a team. Okay, and people ask, well, how does it, is it going to have me, affect me if I get to play? No, I told you it's not a requirement. Okay, it will never directly hurt you if you don't show up. Okay, but at the same time, we can't evaluate you. I was explaining this to the kids the other day. We can't evaluate you during those two months if you're not there. Your teammates can't evaluate you both as a player, but more importantly as a teammate if they don't see you. And vice versa. When we see you, there's a, there's a now there's an opportunity. You know, we've had kids come through this winter, all of a sudden we see some kids that can move better than we thought they could. They were able to make it a positive you know, impression while at the same time develop themselves. Okay? Develop the trust in, in themselves. When I talk a little bit later about some of the gains that some of these kids have had, you wouldn't believe the amount of belief they now have in themselves based on what they've been able to do in the off season by putting the good old fashioned American hard work. And to give you an example of this, what I'd like to do, and I'm not bringing everybody up here, but I, I would like to bring up the top point getters in the off season, the kids that showed up the most, and I think you're gonna see a correlation between the number of kids that were there the most and the kids that gained the great, had the greatest great gains in things like bench squat and deadlift. So these are the kids that have been there over 50 times. Over 50 times in the morning, if that's from 6 to 7 a.m. And some certainly much more than that. And these also are kids that play three, uh, two sports, one in the winter and one in the spring. So I want to call these names. I want you guys to come up here real quick. Miller, Fleming, Chicken Hawk, Bacon, Viewer, Connect, both Meldrums, Likens, Mahaffey. Come on up here. We talked we talk to her about building trust. You're going to tell me showing up minimum of 51 times at 6 a.m. doesn't build trust themselves among each other? I will tell you this, and I like to point some kids out sometimes, particularly I don't want them to get the impression I like them. But nonetheless, we're saying in the 51 times or more, Miller showed up 96 times. I don't think he's missed a day since, since uh, December. I could be wrong. 96 mornings. Now in a minute, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to go through our top four um, uh, kids that gained the greatest in squat, deadlift, and bench. It could be someone sitting in the audience or sitting up here, I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to give you the results. In the bench press, these are the kids that saw the greatest gains, and you can just raise your hand. Miller, he's gained 39 pounds already, I'm sorry, that's wrong, yeah, in, in this bench. Mahaffey, 37 pounds. First, I want to give credit and, and uh, appreciation to uh, John Likens and Tom Bacon, as well as I think Ted Davis, who kind of arranged that whole meeting and for him to be here today. So, first of all, I'll give those two guys a round of applause so we have the opportunity. <laughs> now, I know I sent a brief bio home on, uh, on Brad Bates, and, and uh, I was, when I was talking to him on the phone, I was going to mention I recall when I was a kid. His dad being the um, head coach at Northern, I recall his brother probably more, Joel, just because I'm a little uh, younger than Mr. Bates over there. But uh, and, and going to Eastern, which is also my alma mater, is probably a reason I remember that also as well. But uh, really a great story, and I'm not going to bore you with all the details because most of you probably read it, but we're talking about a local kid from, uh, from Port here in Northern, I believe, uh, that uh, just had a great dream, a desire to play Big Ten football. And rather than, again, like we said earlier with Mike Singletary, rather than do what people said he couldn't do, he busted his butt. And now, still 30-some years later, his uh, workouts are legendary. He still holds records at University of Michigan for the conditioning tests. And that's what, what got him from being a walk-on that other schools didn't want to a scholarship player. 
at one of the most prestigious football institutions in the world through hard work. You know, and I think that's one of the things that gets us excited to see, you know, listen to them today. But when I talk to them on the phone, I realize that's the reason we get excited, but that's not the reason we should listen to them. Because when I was talking to a gentleman on the phone that I'd never met before, here's the things that he talked to me about and made the impression on me, which is why I realized here's a guy we need to listen to. You know, sometimes we see a guy that's had great success with football. You know, now he's been an athletic director of some schools and not at the University of uh, uh, Miami in Ohio. Can we think it's the success of the reason we should listen to him? It's the other way around. It's the man that created that success. Because when I talked on the phone, he talked about things like character and life lessons and integrity. He didn't talk about what I did in football or what I'm doing at University of Miami. He talked about things that make him a great man, which is why he's had great success. So I'd like to turn the uh, microphone over to uh, Brad Bates.